Impressionism Impressionism is a 19th century art movement characterized by relatively small, thin, yet visible brush strokes, open composition, emphasis on accurate depiction off light in its changing qualities, often accentuating the effects of the passage of time, ordinary subject matter, inclusion of movement as a crucial element of human perception and experience, and unusual visual angles. Impressionism originated with a group of Paris-based artists whose independent exhibitions brought them to prominence during the 1870s and 1880s. The Impressionists faced harsh opposition from the conventional art community in France. The name of the style derives from the title of a Claude Monet work, Impression, Soleil Levant, Impression, Sunrise, which provoked the critic Louis Leroy to coin the term in a satirical review published in the Parisian newspaper Le Chivery. The development of Impressionism in the visual arts was soon followed by analogous styles in other media that became known as Impressionist music and Impressionist literature. Radicals in their time, early Impressionists violated the rules of academic painting. They constructed their pictures from freely brushed colors that took precedence over lines and contours, following the example of painters such as Eugène Delacroix and J.M.W. Turner. They also painted realistic scenes of modern life, and often painted outdoors. Previously, Still lifes and portraits as well as landscapes were usually painted in a studio. The Impressionists found that they could capture the momentary and transient effects of sunlight by painting outdoors or on plein air. They portrayed overall visual effects instead of details, and used short broken brush strokes of mixed and pure unmixed color, not blended smoothly or shaded, as was customary, to achieve an effect of intense color vibration. Impressionism emerged in France at the same time that a number of other painters, including the Italian artists known as the Michiali, and Winslow Homer in the United States, were also exploring plein air painting. The Impressionists, however, developed new techniques specific to the style. Encompassing what its adherents argued was a different way of seeing, it is an art of immediacy and movement, of candid poses and compositions, of the play of light expressed in a bright and varied use of color. The public at first hostile, gradually came to believe that the Impressionists had captured a fresh and original vision, even if the art critics and art establishment disapproved of the new style. By recreating the sensation in the eye that views the subject, rather than delineating the details of the subject, and by creating a welter of techniques and forms, Impressionism is a precursor of various painting styles, including Neo-Impressionism, Post-Impressionism, Fauvism, and Cubism. In the middle of the 19th century, a time of change, as Emperor Napoleon III rebuilt Paris and waged war, the Académie des Beaux-Arts dominated French art. The Académie was the preserver of traditional French painting standards of content and style. Historical subjects, religious themes, and portraits were valued, landscape and still life were not. The Académie preferred carefully finished images that looked realistic when examined closely. Paintings in this style were made up of precise brush strokes carefully blended to hide the artist's hand in the work. Color was restrained and often toned down further by the application of a golden varnish. The Académie had an annual, juried art show, the Salon de Paris, and artists whose work was displayed in the show won prizes, garnered commissions, and enhanced their prestige. The standards of the juries represented the values of the Académie represented by the works of such artists as Jean-Léon Jérôme and Alexander Cabanel. In the early 1860s, four young painters, Claude Monet, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and Frédéric Bazile, met while studying under the academic artist Charles Glare. They discovered that they shared an interest in painting landscape and contemporary life rather than historical or mythological scenes. Following a practice that had become increasingly popular by mid-century, they often ventured into the countryside together to paint in the open air, but not for the purpose of making sketches to be developed into carefully finished works in the studio, as was the usual custom. By painting in sunlight directly from nature, and making bold use of the vivid synthetic pigments that had become available since the beginning of the century, they began to develop a lighter and brighter manner of painting that extended further the realism of Gustave Courbet and the Barbizon School. A favorite meeting place for the artists was the Café Gerboy on Avenue de Clichy in Paris where the discussions were often led by Edouard Manet, whom the younger artists greatly admired. They were soon joined by Camille Pissarro, Paul Cézanne, and Armand Guillemin. During the 1860s, the Salon jury routinely rejected about half of the works submitted by Monet and his friends in favor of works by artists faithful to the approved style. In 1863, the Salon jury rejected Manet's The Luncheon on the Grass, 
La Déjeuner sur l'herbe, primarily because it depicted a nude woman with two clothed men at a picnic. While the Salon jury routinely accepted nudes in historical and allegorical paintings, they condemned Manet for placing a realistic nude in a contemporary setting. The jury's severely worded rejection of Manet's painting appalled his admirers, and the unusually large number of rejected works that year perturbed many French artists. After Emperor Napoleon III saw the rejected works of 1863, he decreed that the public be allowed to judge the work themselves, and the Salon des Refuses, Salon of the Refused, was organized. While many viewers came only to laugh, the Salon des Refuses drew attention to the existence of a new tendency in art and attracted more visitors than the regular Salon. Artists' petitions requesting a new Salon des Refuses in 1867, and again in 1872, were denied. In December 1873, Monet, Renoir, Pissarro, Sisley, Cezanne, Bertha Morisot, Edgar Degas and several other artists founded the Société Anonyme Cooperative des Artistes Pantra, Sculptures, Gravers, Cooperative and Anonymous Association of Painters, Sculptors, and Engravers, to exhibit their artworks independently. Members of the association were expected to forswear participation in the Salon. The organizers invited a number of other progressive artists to join them in their inaugural exhibition, including the old Rouge and Baudin, whose example had first persuaded Monet to adopt plein air painting years before. Another painter who greatly influenced Monet and his friends, Johann Jonkend, declined to participate, as did Edouard Manet. In total, 30 artists participated in their first exhibition, Held in April 1874 at the studio of the photographer Nadar. The critical response was mixed. Monet and Cezanne received the harshest attacks. Critic and humorist Louis Leroy wrote a scathing review in the newspaper Le Chivery in which, making wordplay with the title of Claude Monet's Impression, Sunrise, Impression, Soleil Levant, he gave the artists the name by which they became known. Derisively titling his article, Leroy declared that Monet's painting was at most a sketch and could hardly be termed a finished work. He wrote, in the form of a dialogue between viewers. The term impressionist quickly gained favor with the public. It was also accepted by the artists themselves, even though they were a diverse group in style and temperament, unified primarily by their spirit of independence and rebellion. They exhibited together, albeit with shifting membership, eight times between 1874 and 1886. The impressionist style, with its loose, spontaneous brushstrokes, would soon become synonymous with modern life. Monet, Sisley, Morisot, and Pissarro may be considered the purest impressionists, in their consistent pursuit of an art of spontaneity, sunlight, and color. Degas rejected much of this, as he believed in the primacy of drawing over color and belittled the practice of painting outdoors. Renoir turned away from impressionism for a time during the 1880s, and never entirely regained his commitment to its ideas. Edouard Manet, although regarded by the Impressionists as their leader, never abandoned his liberal use of black as a color, while Impressionists avoided its use and preferred to obtain darker colors by mixing, and never participated in the Impressionist exhibitions. He continued to submit his works to the Salon, where his painting Spanish Singer had won a second-class medal in 1861, and he urged the others to do likewise, arguing that the Salon is the real field of battle where a reputation could be made. Among the artists of the core group, minus Bazile, who had died in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, defections occurred as Cezanne, followed later by Renoir, Sisley, and Monet, abstained from the group exhibitions so they could submit their works to the Salon. Disagreements arose from issues such as Guillemin's membership in the group, championed by Pizarro and Cezanne against opposition from Monet and Degas, who thought him unworthy. Degas invited Mary Cassatt to display her work in the 1879 exhibition, but also insisted on the inclusion of Jean-Francois Raffaelli, Ludovic Lepique, and other realists who did not represent Impressionist practices, causing Monet in 1880 to accuse the Impressionists of opening doors to first-come daubers. The group divided over invitations to Paul Signac and Georges Serrato exhibit with them in 1886. Pissarro was the only artist to show at all eight Impressionist exhibitions. The individual artists achieved few financial rewards from the Impressionist exhibitions, but their art gradually won a degree of public acceptance and support. Their dealer, Durand Rule, played a major role in this as he kept their work before the public and arranged shows for them in London and New York. Although Sisley died in poverty in 1899, Renoir had a great salon success in 1879. 
Monet became secure financially during the early 1880s and so did Pissarro by the early 1890s. By this time the methods of impressionist painting, in a diluted form, had become commonplace in salon art. French painters who prepared the way for Impressionism include the Romantic colorist Eugène Delacroix, the leader of the realists Gustave Courbet, and painters of the Barbizon school such as Théodore Rousseau. The Impressionists learned much from the work of Johann Bartol Jonkind, Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot and Eugène Bodin, who painted from nature in a direct and spontaneous style that prefigured Impressionism, and who befriended and advised the younger artists. A number of identifiable techniques and working habits contributed to the innovative style of the Impressionists. Although these methods had been used by previous artists, and are often conspicuous in the work of artists such as Franz Hals, Diego Velázquez, Peter Paul Rubens, John Constable, and J.M.W. Turner, the Impressionists were the first to use them all together, and with such consistency. These techniques include New technology played a role in the development of the style. Impressionists took advantage of the mid-century introduction of premixed paints and tin tubes, resembling modern toothpaste tubes, which allowed artists to work more spontaneously, both outdoors and indoors. Previously, painters made their own paints individually, by grinding and mixing dry pigment powders with linseed oil, which were then stored in animal bladders. Many vivid synthetic pigments became commercially available to artists for the first time during the 19th century. These included cobalt blue, viridian, cadmium yellow, and synthetic ultramarine blue, all of which were in use by the 1840s, before Impressionism. The Impressionist's manner of painting made bold use of these pigments, and of even newer colors such as cerulean blue, which became commercially available to artists in the 1860s. The Impressionist's progress toward a brighter style of painting was gradual. During the 1860s, Monet and Renoir sometimes painted on canvases prepared with the traditional red-brown or gray ground. By the 1870s, Monet, Renoir, and Pissarro usually chose to paint on grounds of a lighter gray or beige color, which functioned as a middle tone in the finished painting. By the 1880s, some of the Impressionists had come to prefer white or slightly off-white grounds, and no longer allowed the ground color a significant role in the finished painting. Prior to the Impressionists, other painters, notably such 17th-century Dutch painters as Jan Steen, had emphasized common subjects, but their methods of composition were a traditional. They arranged their compositions so that the main subject commanded the viewer's attention. The Impressionists relaxed the boundary between subject and background so that the effect of an Impressionist painting often resembles a snapshot, a part of a larger reality captured as if by chance. Photography was gaining popularity and as cameras became more portable, photographs became more candid. Photography inspired Impressionists to represent momentary action, not only in the fleeting lights of a landscape, but in the day-to-day -day lives of people. The development of Impressionism can be considered partly as a reaction by artists to the challenge presented by photography, which seemed to devalue the artist's skill in reproducing reality. Both portrait and landscape paintings were deemed somewhat deficient and lacking in truth as photography produced lifelike images much more efficiently and reliably. In spite of this, photography actually inspired artists to pursue other means of creative expression, and rather than compete with photography to emulate reality, artists focused on the one thing they could inevitably do better than the photograph, by further developing into an art form its very subjectivity in the conception of image, the very subjectivity that photography eliminated. The Impressionists sought to express their perceptions of nature, rather than create exact representations. This allowed artists to depict subjectively what they saw with their tacit imperatives of taste and conscience. Photography encouraged painters to exploit aspects of painting medium, like color, which photography then lacked. The Impressionists were the first to consciously offer a subjective alternative to the photograph. Another major influence was Japanese ukiyo e art prints, Japonism. The art of these prints contributed significantly to the snapshot angles and unconventional compositions that became characteristic of Impressionism. An example is Monet's Giordano Saint Address, 1867, with its bold blocks of color and composition on a strong diagonal slant showing the influence of Japanese prints. Edgar Degas was both an avid photographer and a collector of Japanese prints. His The Dance Class, La Classe de Danse, of 1874 shows both influences and its asymmetrical composition. The dancers are seemingly caught off guard in various awkward poses, leaving an expanse of empty floor space in the lower right quadrant. He also captured his dancers in sculpture, 
such as The Little Dancer of 14 Years. The central figures in the development of Impressionism in France, listed alphabetically, were Among the close associates of the Impressionists were several painters who adopted their methods to some degree. These include Jean-Louis Fouain, who participated in Impressionist exhibitions in 1879, 1880, 1881 and 1886, and Giuseppe Donitis, an Italian artist living in Paris who participated in the first Impressionist exhibit at the invitation of Degas, although the other Impressionists disparaged his work. Federico Zandamenegui was another Italian friend of Degas who showed with the Impressionists. Eva Gonzalez was a follower of many who did not exhibit with the group. James Abbott McNeil Whistler was an American-born painter who played a part in Impressionism although he did not join the group and preferred grey colors. Walter Sickert, an English artist, was initially a follower of Whistler, and later an important disciple of Degas, he did not exhibit with the Impressionists. In 1904 the artist and writer Winford de Hurst wrote the first important study of the French painters published in English, Impressionist Painting, Its Genesis and Development, which did much to popularize Impressionism in Great Britain. By the early 1880s, Impressionist methods were affecting, at least superficially, the art of the Salon. Fashionable painters such as Jean Thoreau and Henri Gervex found critical and financial success by brightening their palettes while retaining the smooth finish expected of Salon art. Works by these artists are sometimes casually referred to as Impressionism, despite their remoteness from Impressionist practice. The influence of the French Impressionists lasted long after most of them had died. Artists like J.D. Kirsenbaum were borrowing Impressionist techniques throughout the 20th century. As the influence of Impressionism spread beyond France, artists, too numerous to list, became identified as practitioners of the new style. Some of the more important examples are The sculptor Auguste Rodin is sometimes called an Impressionist for the way he used roughly modeled surfaces to suggest transient light effects. Victorialist photographers whose work is characterized by soft focus and atmospheric effects have also been called Impressionists. French Impressionist cinema is a term applied to a loosely defined group of films and filmmakers in France from 1919 to 1929, although these years are debatable. French Impressionist filmmakers include Abel Gantz, Jean Epstein, Germain Delac, Marcel Lerbier, Louis Delac, and Dmitri Kursanov. Musical Impressionism is the name given to a movement in European classical music that arose in the late 19th century and continued into the middle of the 20th century. Originating in France, musical Impressionism is characterized by suggestion and atmosphere, and is choose the emotional excesses of the Romantic era. Impressionist composers favored short forms such as the Nocturne, Arabesque, and Prelude and often explored on common scales such as the whole tone scale. Perhaps the most notable innovations of Impressionist composers were the introduction of major seventh chords and the extension of chord structures and thirds to five and six part harmonies. The influence of visual Impressionism on its musical counterpart is debatable. Claude Debussy and Maurice Ravel are generally considered the greatest Impressionist composers, but Debussy disavowed the term, calling it the invention of critics. Eric Satie was also considered in this category, though his approach was regarded as less serious, more musical novelty in nature. Paul Ducasse is another French composer sometimes considered an Impressionist, but his style is perhaps more closely aligned to the late Romanticists. Musical Impressionism beyond France includes the work of such composers as Ottorino Respighi, Italy, Ralph von Williams, Cyril Scott, and John Ireland, England, and Manuel de Falla, and Isaac Albeneth, Spain. The term Impressionism has also been used to describe works of literature in which a few select details suffice to convey the sensory impressions of an incident or scene. Impressionist literature is closely related to symbolism, with its major exemplars being Baudelaire, Mallarmé, Rambo, and Verlaine. Authors such as Virginia Woolf, D. H. Lawrence, and Joseph Conrad have written works that are impressionistic in the way that they describe, rather than interpret the impressions, sensations and emotions that constitute a character's mental life. Post-Impressionism developed from Impressionism. During the 1880s several artists began to develop different precepts for the use of color, pattern, form, and line, derived from the Impressionist example, Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin, Georges Seurat, and Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. These artists were slightly younger than the Impressionists, and their work is known as post-Impressionism. Some of the original Impressionist artists also ventured into this new territory, Camille Pissarro briefly painted in a pointillist manner, and even Monet abandoned strict plein air painting. Paul Cézanne, 
who participated in the first and third Impressionist exhibitions, developed a highly individual vision emphasizing pictorial structure, and he is more often called a post-Impressionist. Although these cases illustrate the difficulty of assigning labels, the work of the original Impressionist painters may, by definition, be categorized as Impressionism. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.